Before we get into today's video, don't forget to head on over to rrgsnacks.com, our online concession stand that has an assortment of barbecue beef jerky, chicken and waffles popcorn, and butter toffee peanuts. This story begins way back in the 70s. A man by the name of Philip Dixon grew up in the middle-class Baltimore neighborhood. His siblings did well in school and stayed out of trouble. But as for Philip, he grew tired of being a good kid by the time he entered high school. According to the Washington Post, Philip started hanging around the wrong crowd and started abusing substances. During one holiday season, he took the Christmas presents his mom had stashed away and sold them to buy more drugs. Meanwhile, Juanita Graves grew up in the low-income section of West Baltimore. She got good grades and was very friendly. Although her family didn't have much, her mother kept their home looking lovely and cooked a hot dinner every single night while her dad worked long hours as a dump truck driver. While attending Northwestern High School, Juanita befriended a girl named Sheila. Sheila decided to hook Juanita up on a date with her brother, who just so happened to be Philip Dixon. And this is how the story begins. Two teenagers from different walks of life meet up for an innocent first date. From that day forward, their lives would never be the same. 19-year-old Philip and 17-year-old Juanita were married in 1972. A couple of years later, they welcomed their son, Phil Jr. Family members told the Washington Post that Juanita loved her husband so much that she abandoned her good girl ways and started using heroin with Philip. Their relationship was described as on again, off again. One of their breaks occurred in 1978, and Juanita started dating a man named Bruce Flanagan. Bruce told Baltimore Magazine that Juanita became pregnant during their time together, but she told him the baby wasn't his. They eventually broke up before she gave birth, and Bruce went on with his life, got married, and had a family. Juanita gave birth to Juan Dixon on October 9, 1978. The years went by, and Juanita and Philip welcomed another child named Nicole sometime around 1981. Juan told the Baltimore Sun he noticed how Phil Jr. was their dad's twin, and Juan often asked his mom why he didn't look like his dad, too. Her response was always, don't go there. By the time Juan turned four, his parents were full-blown addicts, and they had a lot of trouble with the law. According to the Washingtonian, Philip was locked up for a scam he ran with an airport employee, and Juanita was apprehended for petty theft, stealing wallets, and writing bad checks. They did their best to shield their children from what they had going on in their lives. They spoke in code by switching letters around in their form of pig Latin. But Phil Jr. caught on to their new language and realized what was happening. Phil Jr. told a news outlet, It was some bad stuff. Gangsta stuff. I don't even want to speculate what else they did. Juan and his siblings spent a lot of time with their extended family, including their Aunt Sheila, who later went on to become the mayor of Baltimore. They spent Christmas 1984 together as a family, and shortly thereafter, Juan's parents broke up for good. Philip ended up behind bars, and Juanita met a man named Robert Cooper. They welcomed a child named Germaine in 1987. According to the telegram, Robert left soon after the baby was born and never returned, so Phil Jr. stepped in to help raise the baby, all while taking care of his younger siblings. To honor his siblings, Germaine dropped the last name Cooper and now goes by Germaine Dixon. Phil Jr. became his younger sibling's caretaker, protector, and disciplinarian. He tried to make their days as normal as possible despite everything that was going on at home. During summers, Juan and Phil Jr. would watch soap operas while Juanita hid in the bathroom to use substances. After she was finished, they would find paraphernalia hidden behind the tiles. When she would emerge from the bathroom, she was the sweet and loving mother that they adored. She would iron clothes and cook dinner, but not long after, she would rest on the couch and her head would flop backward. Sometimes Juan would curl up next to her as she fell asleep. According to Juan and his brother, Juanita would disappear for weeks at a time, only to return with presents as if nothing had happened. They were spending more and more time at their maternal grandmother's house while Juanita slipped deeper into addiction. Late at night, they would whisper to each other in the dark and talk about their dreams of becoming basketball players. Phil Jr. promised Juan, When I make it to the NBA, you won't have to worry about anything. 
At one point, Juanita was sober for about six months and applied for a job at the post office. Unfortunately, after discovering her criminal history, they refused to give her the job. She was pregnant with twins but suffered a miscarriage, and then she fell out with her best friend. Phil Jr. said, It was too many bad things happening all at once. It was a hard time for her. When Juan was 16, he and Phil Jr. found a crumpled up piece of paper on their mom's dresser. When they opened it, they saw the words HIV positive. The siblings held each other and cried. The virus destroyed Juanita's body quickly. Her teeth chipped and fell out, and she became skinny and frail. Phil Jr. said, We were nervous and scared to be around her. We wouldn't really come into the house until it was after dark and time to go to sleep. Sometime in the spring of 1994, Bruce bumped into Juanita. They caught up and Juanita shared with him some information about Juan playing basketball. But when Bruce asked for more information, Juanita reportedly got irritated and changed the subject. Juanita passed away a few months later, on August 30, 1994, less than a year after her sons found out about her diagnosis. Unfortunately, the family was unable to afford a headstone. Bruce told the Baltimore Sun he attended the funeral, but he didn't see Juan, nor did he hear Juan's name mentioned during the service. Their uncle told the Washingtonian that the tragic loss brought the siblings closer together, and they often talked about providing for the family and for one another when they got older. But not long after Juanita passed away, they found out their dad, Philip, was also HIV positive. Juan headed to the basketball courts to escape the reality of possibly losing his dad as well. It was at that time that Juan decided he needed a better academic record to get into a Division I college, so he transferred from his public school to Calvert Hall High School, a mostly white private school in the Baltimore suburbs. His Aunt Janice, who's his dad's sister, paid Juan's private school tuition. During his junior year, he met Robin Bragg, who was a senior at a nearby high school. His family affectionately referred to her as Barbie because of her light hair and tall, lean physique. After one of his games, Robin waited for him outside of the locker room. What are we talking about? I have no idea. You're talking about the young and the restless. <laughs> you don't remember that? No. Yeah, we talking about the Why young. Why do you remember that? Probably the, the love of my life. Philip took a break from using heroin, got a job, and tried to rebuild a relationship with his sons. But as the virus took over his body, he returned to taking substances and passed away in 1995, one year after Juanita lost her life. Months later, 17-year-old Juan experienced another loss when his paternal grandmother passed away. Phil Jr. went on to become an All-American Division III athlete at Shenandoah University. But his desire to become a professional basketball player didn't quite pan out. He wanted to try out for the NBA or play ball overseas, but he knew that would require his family members to foot the cost. Phil Jr. added, When you don't have parents, how do you say, Will you take care of a grown man so he can go try and be a basketball star? So instead, Phil Jr. became a Baltimore police officer to help provide for his siblings. Juan was a rising star at his high school and averaged 23 points a game. He also led the school to the Catholic League championship game. Despite being visited by several colleges, he already made up his mind to join his high school sweetheart Robin at the University of Maryland. Sources state Robin tutored him and helped write his papers. And when he would get the urge to shoot buckets at one in the morning, Robin would gladly wake up and join him to grab all the rebounds. Juan became the school's all-time leading scorer and helped the university advance to the Sweet 16. Bruce kept hearing a lot of noise about a really talented player at the University of Maryland, and several articles and interviews mention the athlete's mother as Juanita. Bruce decided to turn on the TV to check out one of their games, and he almost fell out of his chair. The athlete was Juan, of course, and Bruce was shocked by the similarities between them. He said to himself, That's my son. One morning, he even ran into Juan at a department store. Bruce told Juan he used to play basketball as well, and he gave Juan a few pointers to work on. Bruce also told him that he knew Juan's mother and his entire family really well, and that was that. Despite believing that Juan was his son, Bruce was too afraid to tell him the truth. He was also a bit paralyzed by guilt. So many years had passed by, and he knew he could have and should have done more to get to the bottom of the truth. 
But he knew that at that moment, while Juan was a rising star in college, it was the wrong time for him to come forward. He also didn't want Juan to think he was trying to take advantage of his fame and the impending fortune he would receive once he got drafted into the NBA. So Bruce relied on a higher power. He told himself, God will put us together one day. Robin majored in business and Juan earned his degree in family studies. After graduating, he was the 17th overall pick by the Washington Wizards in the 2002 NBA draft. His contract with the Wizards paid him $3.2 million over three years, which is a little over $1 million a year. And then he had to pay Uncle Sam nearly half of that amount and another chunk of it had to go to his agent. In the end, Juan was left with a nice little salary, way more than the average American and way more than he had ever seen. But it was just enough to live comfortably and provide for himself and his girlfriend, and his family wasn't too happy about that. The same year he was drafted, he purchased a $725,000 home in Silver Spring, Maryland, with views of a golf course, and he invited his little brother Jermaine to live with him. And then Juan got busy with some major renovations. He hired people to remove the wooden floors and put down some marble. He switched some of the brass and gold-plated hardware and bought new chandeliers and faucets. He put Robin in charge of decorating. She said, it's his house, but he talks about it like it's our house. A brand new Lexus convertible and a Cadillac Escalade sat outside while he and Robin would daydream about starting a family of their own. At the time of their 2003 interview with the Washingtonian, Juan considered marrying Robin, but then he changed his mind. He said, I'm not in a hurry to grow up. I want to have fun, run around the house naked if I want to. According to the Washingtonian, Juan's relatives were surprised when he bought the house and cars. In fact, he didn't even tell them about the big purchases. They heard it through the grapevine. Perhaps his family didn't ask him to bankroll their lives. However, they kind of expected it, considering they took care of him his entire life. They couldn't help but recall the conversations where Juan and Phil Jr. promised to look out for them once either of them made it big. But as soon as the money started rolling in, Juan reportedly switched up. His sister Nicole became a mom sometime around the age of 19, and she was living with their Aunt Janice, the same aunt that footed the bill for Juan's private high school tuition. While Juan was living in his beautiful home with his Barbie, Nicole reportedly couldn't scrape up enough money to fix the brakes on her car. Her child's father lived nearby, but Aunt Janice wouldn't allow him to visit because he didn't have a job. When asked by the Washingtonian if he was going to pitch in financially, Juan said, I want to help, but first, I'm trying to create a life for myself. If I allowed myself to feel indebted to everyone who helped me, I'd be broke. Aunt Janice still hoped Juan might come through for them during the 2003 holiday season. She said, while rolling her eyes, For years we made their Christmas. It will be interesting to see if Juan makes our Christmas this year. One person who didn't have their hand out was Phil Jr. He was content with his salary as a police officer and bought a house and a car on his own. He reportedly dropped work every chance he could just to be by Juan's side. On Mother's Day 2003, Juan and his family members all chipped in to buy his mother the headstone she deserved. Juan and Robin got married in 2005 and welcomed two sons. Juan's younger brother, Jermaine, attended the University of Pittsburgh and played on the men's basketball team. Jermaine had a brief stint playing professional ball overseas. As of this video, he works as an assistant coach under Juan at Coppin State University. But back to the story. Juan bounced around to several NBA teams. In 2009, he signed with the Atlanta Hawks, but they cut him days before the season opener, and Juan was forced to take his talents overseas. He and Robin lost hundreds of thousands of dollars due to a friend stealing their money, and Juan eventually moved on with the woman he described as the love of his life. He got banned from playing overseas after testing positive for steroids, and he and Robin divorced in 2012, although they still lived under the same roof. Well, that is until their home went into foreclosure in 2015. As of this video, they have gotten remarried. Robin joined the cast of The Real Housewives of Potomac in 2016. At some point, Robin and her brother discussed a story they had seen on TV in which a person found a long-lost parent. The story prompted Robin to have a discussion with Juan about rumors that were going around. When Robin suggested that Juan's father wasn't his real dad, it triggered a memory Juan had with his mom many years ago. Juan said, I was probably around eight, nine years old. I remember my mother saying to me, you're not supposed to be here. You were not supposed to happen. 
Juan did some digging, which led him to Bruce. Juan called Bruce on August 31, 2016, and they met at a local store the next day. The moment Juan laid eyes on Bruce, all of his questions were answered. Bruce was a smaller, older version of himself. They even had the same demeanor and the same handwriting. Juan looked at Robin and said, That's my dad. He and Bruce took a DNA test, and the results showed that Bruce was indeed his father. He told Bruce that he wanted him to be the kind of dad he could rely on and could come to for advice. Bruce answered, I want to be the dad that you always should have had in your life. Sadly, not everyone was happy about Juan connecting with his father. The Washington Post reported in 2017 that several members of the extended family that helped raise Juan, including his protective older brother Phil Jr., cut off communication with Juan. The source stated the family couldn't come to terms with Bruce becoming a part of Juan's life, and they didn't view the reunion as the type of feel-good story the media was trying to portray it to be. When Juan and Bruce shared their story with HBO, the producers reached out to Juan's family to see if they'd feel comfortable talking on camera, but many of them turned them down. One producer told the Washington Post, One of the lessons is that family secrets divide families, and the longer they're held, in a way, the more dangerous they become in that regard. In gaining a father, Juan lost a lot of people he truly loved and cared about. As of this video, we're unsure if he and his family have reconciled, but we wish them all nothing but the best.